In this video, we're going to take a look at solving compound inequalities. Compound inequalities are just two inequalities that are tied together with either an AND or an OR. In these two, we have a situation, this would be an AND situation, and these, we've got the word OR. Now, first of all, we often don't see the AND written out with the word AND. It's often written like this with the three pieces. So we have the negative 11 is less than or equal to 2x minus 1, which is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can solve that. One way to solve it is to focus on a piece of it at a time. And I'm just going to take this apart here for a second. We could look at it as this part. So the negative 11 is less than or equal to 2x minus 1, and solve that. Then and, we could look at the other piece, which would be 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to 1. We could solve those two pieces individually, and then tie them together with the and to come up with a graph. Or, we can work on all three pieces at the same time. And that's how I'm going to choose to go about these. So I'm going to focus in on where the variable is, in this case in the middle, and that'll be the case usually. We want to get that x by itself. So how would we do that? Well, add 1. Now, remember how typically we'd add to both sides? In this case, we're going to add to all three sections. So we're going to add 1 here. We're going to add one here in the middle, and I'm going to add one right here. Then, do that math. Negative 11 plus 1 would be negative 10 is less than or equal to. Then what's left in the middle? 2x. Then we've got less than or equal to, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay. Very critically important that you bring down the pieces and keep it all together like that. All right, then. We continue working to get that x by itself, so divide by 2, divide by 2, and divide by 2. Then negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5, is less than or equal to 2x divided by 2. That's just x, which is what we want, and then is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so now we are at a point where we can graph this. So I can do it one of two ways. I know that what we've got going here, it's negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. In a situation like this, it's taking a chunk of the number line, and each part here gives us an endpoint. So we can focus in on that part of it, and let's just graph those endpoints. So we have negative 5 and 1, okay, and you could fill in the details there, I won't, since... I'm kind of running out of space. But then, at those endpoints, we're including each of them because it's got the equal to part. So I'm going to put filled in circles here at each endpoint. And then I want all the stuff that's between negative 5 and 1. So it's all those numbers. Now, remember, I could check something and see if it works. So a number that's between those two, let's try 0 and just put it in for x and see what happens. So if we go back to our original inequality, we put in 0 for x, we have negative 11 is less than or equal to 0 minus 1 would be negative 1, which is less than or equal to 1. That's true. So what we see is that it's all these numbers that are between negative 5 and 1 are the ones that work. Now, another way that we could look at this quickly is to break it into the two pieces and graph those and then in an AND situation we're looking for where the graphs overlap and I'm going to come back to that and I'll show you how that works with this one down here but let's go over here first and take a look at this one now this is an OR situation so in this case we solve each of these inequalities separately so let's go ahead and do that. In this case, I've got the S right there I want to get by itself. So subtract 3, subtract 3. We've got 2 times S is less than or equal to 7 minus 3 is 4. Divide by 2, divide by 2, 
s is less than or equal to 2. Okay? Then bring down the or, don't lose track of that. Then we, in this side, we want to get that s by itself as well. Subtract 5, subtract 5. So we have 3s is greater than 26 minus 5 is 21. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and we get s is greater than 7. Okay? Now, in an or situation, what's usually going to happen is that the lines are going off in opposite directions. So let's take a look at what we've got going here. In this case, we've got the 2 and the 7 would be over here. The 2, it's less than or equal to 2, so it's going to be a filled in circle. Where's the stuff that's less than 2? Well, it's over this way, like so. Then this one, we've got s is greater than 7. Since it's just greater than, it's an open circle. And where's the stuff greater than 7? going over this way. Now, in an OR situation, we're looking for the places where at least one of the number line covers, so one of the, the um, graphs covers. So where the graph heads over, in this case over here, and in this case over here. It's an OR. In an AND situation, we're looking for where they cross. And let's take a look at this, sec this uh, third one just a little bit differently to show how that's the case. So again, I can solve this by working on all three pieces at once, working to get that variable by itself. So what's hanging out with it? There's a plus 7, so I'll subtract 7 to get rid of that. And I need to do it on all three pieces. So on the left here, we end up with negative 9. Now bring down the pieces is less than or equal to. In the middle, we're left with 3b, and then less than or equal to 13 minus 7 is 6. Then get that b by itself, so divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. On this side, we're left with negative 3 is less than or equal to. The 3b divided by 3 is just b, less than or equal to and 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now, I'm going to pull that apart into the two inequalities. So the first one would be this part right here, and I could write that as b is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay? So if you cover up this piece and just focus in right here, all I did was flip the b and the negative 3 around. Then I could say and, then I look at this second part, b, is less than or equal to 2. Okay, So we're looking for numbers where it's greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than 2 or equal to 2. Okay, So if I graphed each of those individually, let's take a look at what happens here. So we have negative 3 there. We've got 2 over here. Now, okay, greater than or equal to negative 3. That's going to be a filled in circle going this direction. Okay? Then this one, b is less than negative or equal to 2, it's going to also be a filled in circle, and that one's going this way. Now, what numbers work? Well, since it's an AND situation, we're looking for where the graphs overlap. Notice, between negative 3 and 2, the graphs overlap. If I get out here, I've only got that one that's showing up. And if I get out here, I've only got the b being greater than or equal to negative 3 showing up. To be an AND, both of them have to be true. So I only take this section right here, and you could call this your rough draft graph, and your final graph would be this in green, filled in circles at both ends, and just connecting the two. Okay, so. Same type of idea as what we see up here in an AND situation. Usually we're going to pull out a chunk of the number line like this because we're looking for that overlapping piece. That's right there. All right, let's take a look at this last one. In this situation, we've got another OR. So solve each of them individually. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. In this case, we get x is less than negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Okay, then or on this other one, add 3 to both sides, add 3, we get x is 
greater than or equal to 6, 3 plus 3. Okay? In an OR, we graph those two individually. So we do that, and we have x being less than 0. Okay, that's an open circle at 0, because it's just less than. Going to the left. Then on the right here, we've got x being greater than or equal to 6. So we'll close circle, because we've got the equal to. And where's the stuff greater than 6? Over there. So our OR situation, the two separate pieces. Now, let's say just for the fun of it, we would have had an inequality, and I'm just going to write a new inequality below this here, to look at what if we would have had x being greater than 0 or x is less than or equal to 6. How would that change the situation? Well, if we graph that, let's take a look here. We have the 0 and the 6. Okay, and I can get that 6 up there a little bit better. Okay, so the 0 and the 6, open circle at 0. Now, greater than 0, that's going to take us this direction. And this one, less than or equal to 6, that's going to be filled in at 6, but less than 6 is going this direction. Now, this in this case, since it's an OR, or means we just have to have one situation being true. So what numbers are greater than 0? Okay, that would be everything going this way. Or less than or equal to 6. Well, holy cow, that's all numbers, right? Because this would extend forever in this direction. That gets all the negative stuff. And if we go this way forever, that gets all the positive stuff. So everything's going to be covered here. So this is actually an example where it would be all real numbers, or all numbers, in an OR situation, because everything would be covered. So don't sort of lull yourself into, oh, it's an OR, so they're always going to go the opposite way. Make sure you look carefully, because if they do go this direction, that would be an example where all numbers are going to work. All right, so solving compound inequalities, ands are often written like this with the three pieces. Remember to solve those. We can do the same thing on all three pieces to get it down and get that variable by itself. When we graph them, typically an and situation, we're going to have a chunk of the number line picked out. And if we break it into two pieces, or if you're given it in two pieces, we're looking for the overlapping part. So here's the final graph in this case right here. Sometimes in the OR situation, typically what you're going to see is that the graphs go off in opposite directions, and we solve each of the inequalities individually. And then just graph, you're basically graphing two inequalities on the same number line. Sometimes, however, we might have a situation like this where they actually overlap and we end up with a solution of all numbers because in this case, everything would be covered. Everything is either greater than 0 or less than or equal to 6 for this example. I hope this video is helpful and is your work with compound inequalities. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.